everyone. This is Andy. Welcome to Get Real with Andy. Why am I talking like this? Because today's topic is about identity. You know, I'm used to how I talk and how I am, but is that really who I am? It is just what I identify with. And I've just decided to do something a little different today because why not? You know, what is the self? Isn't the self just some conglomerated conclusion about how I used to be and therefore this is how I am? It's just a bunch of crap. It's not real. You know, there is a person that I admire very greatly, and he said, and I really like this, he said, all human problems are a case of mistaken identity. And, you know, I almost started talking like my normal self, my regular self. But all human problems are a case of mistaken identity. Let that sink in, because to me, that is so, so profound. That means I have a problem because I don't know who I am. I have a problem because I think I am something that I'm actually not. And so I'm trying to fit that square peg into the round hole of reality. And when there's a mismatch like that, that's when problems arise. You know, am I really limited to what I already know? Because those are the things I may be more capable of, but I'm a beginner in many things, many, many things that I, some of which I have never even tried. So I'm being generous when I say I'm a beginner at it. So if I tried to do something completely new, I'm like a novice and a beginner. And I bet for children who are new to everything, they feel incompetent. It's part of their sense of self. And I think that's in there for so many people. Oh my God, the, the epidemic of low self-esteem is really a pandemic. I haven't met anybody who hasn't been touched by that sense of less than or not good enough you know where does that come from you know do we really get born with some innate personality i've heard parents say parents who have more than one child that the children were each their own unique person from the beginning from very very young infancy they showed signs of being their own personality or are we completely just what we absorb from our environment? Is it nature or nurture? You know, that whole thing. But I've noticed that there is something deeper, something mysterious. There is a frontier of identity that's the most fascinating to me. It has more to do with I'm alive here and now in this human form as this person right now you know somebody pointed out and i love this that even my name was given to me i didn't you know i didn't make that up what's really mine who am i in essence everything has been given to me and one day i will have to say goodbye to everything that i am so my focus here today is on identity and I'm into being a free being. And that means to actually break the shackles of my own thought, my own identifications, and actually my own identity, to go beyond what I believe to be true, what I believe to be me. Because every moment, and I'm really saying this so that I will get it, every moment is brand new, is filled with the possibilities, endless possibilities. And I know that's why people get high. That's why people get drunk. That's why people do all kinds of stuff because we want to break through our own limitations. And our brain is wired to create a map. And by map, I mean that which we are familiar with, that which we know. Our brain is innately lazy. It wants to use as little energy as possible to navigate through life, to meet our basic needs. You know, when I drive to work, I don't have to think about it because I've driven that same route so many times, just uh, a groove in there. And so do I live in the groove 
in that groove of the familiar or do I dare challenge myself to find the frontier of my own identity? Personally, I my favorite times, and I I generally do this when I feel safe, when I feel comfortable enough to, you know, cut loose with people that I know. Um, and I like to do this as a therapist as well, just to trust my gut, to be right on the edge of, of what I know to be true and go beyond even that, to actually try new things, to try it out. Never said it before, never thought it before, never did certain things before. And those points of novelty are the most fun. I think that's why children, if they're not messed with too much, are innately happy because they're living on that frontier of where joy is, that frontier of being unlimited by identity. You know, before they're labeled as the good son or the bad daughter or whatever, before there's some kind of family label, cultural label, because we are none of that. And when the, any of that shackles me down, I will reject it. I love my Jewish heritage, for instance, but I am not that. So much of that, to me, is arbitrary stuff that's been passed down, and we do it as a way to stay connected with our ancestors or something. But you know what? I'd rather be connected with my essence than my ancestors. And maybe some people would say there isn't any difference, but I don't think that's the case. I think there's a huge difference. My essence is immortal. My essence is eternal. It is not limited by culture or any of that. And I know those are really great words. My goal is to actually be there. And you know what? When I approach that, I find myself being naturally high because there's nothing holding me down. It frees me from the timeline of my own thoughts where I flatline my existence into yesterday, today, and tomorrow, and I live in that timeline. But when I go beyond that, I am a free-flying spirit, not bound by space or time. And yet I'm here in three dimensions, doing my three-dimensional thing. I have my stuff, and some stuff isn't mine. And it's all, you know, what was the word? Leela. It's all the sport of the Lord, the playfulness of the God who is just using form as a way to entertain itself or himself or herself. And so it is my joy to actually tap into that and be entertained, to be in the world and not of it. You know, who could know that that could actually be where ease is? I have struggled so much to get to that point, but it isn't about struggle. That's the irony or the paradox of it. It's so easy. That's where ease lives. So listen, I'm not thinking about what I'm saying. I am reaching out. I know I started talking stupid, and maybe I will end this by also talking in a stupid, irregular way, because why not? Why not? I do this with my goofy friends, and I hereby enroll you as my goofy friend because what? I'm trying to establish academic credibility? Pfft, fuck that, you know? Okay, oops, maybe I've gone too far here. But I encourage you, I encourage myself to go beyond what you know, to go, to go beyond what I know to be factually true, Reality is more important than facts anyway. Feelings aren't facts, but feelings in many ways are superior to facts because feelings have heart to them. Facts don't necessarily have any heart to them at all. So here I am making my effort to be balanced and to be right on that frontier. So I am calling this a case of mistaken identity. All right. Talk with you soon. I appreciate it if you leave some comments. And of course, I appreciate it if you look into my books because they're good. 
they're just good. Even I read read parts here and there, and I'm still very proud. And I like the information. I like the flow that I was in. I'm liking the flow that I'm in right here. Okay, love you. Till next time. Thank you.